In this video, we will be looking at arithmetic, geometric, and Fibonacci sequences. So these three you may have heard of before. We're going to look at some examples and how to distinguish between each one. First of all, arithmetic equations. This is very similar to the nth term questions you've seen. So it involves addition and subtraction between terms. And the general rule for the sequence can be written as an nth term, which I'm sure you've heard of before. If not, I have made a video on it to help you understand that one. So let's have a look at some examples. Here you can see that between each term we're adding 2. So that distinguishes that it's an arithmetic sequence and we could find an nth term for it. Now the nth term for this we would say is 2n. Now because that is exactly the same as the 2 times table, there is no plus or minus. If you don't understand where this came from, as I said, watch my nth term videos and you will understand that. Our second example this time, we're adding 6 between each term. So it's going to be 6n. However, if you write our 6n above it, you can see that for the first three terms, the sequence itself is 1 less every time than the 6 times table. So it's 6n minus 1. And finally, this time we are going down by 3. So we have minus 3n, and if you write the minus 3 times table above it, you can then see that instead of the, three, the minus 3 times table, it is 3 less than the 3 times table every time. So it's going to be minus 3n minus 3. So that's the most common type of sequence, which I'm sure many of you have seen before. Geometric sequences are very similar, but it involves multiplying or dividing between terms instead. The main difference is we have something called the common ratio. The common ratio, we're going to work out for each of these. All it is, is what is the difference between each term as you go through. So, 3 to get to 9, we multiply by 3, we multiply by 3, we multiply by 3. You get the point. So our common ratio would be 3. Simple as that. This time, you can see, with the big numbers it's a little bit harder, but we are dividing by 2. As you get down to the smaller numbers, this becomes more apparent. So our ratio this time, rather than dividing by 2, we would say we're multiplying by a half, as that is the same thing. And finally, for this one, you can see they're alternating in terms of positive and negative between each term. So that indicates that it is going to be a negative ratio this time, because if you take a negative and multiply it by a negative, it's going to make it positive again. Whereas if you take that positive and multiply it by a negative, it's going to be negative the next time around. So that is how you can work that out. And if you look at the numbers themselves, 4, 8, 16, and so on, it's 2. So we have a common ratio of minus 2. And that's going to be our final answer for that one. Now finally, we have the Fibonacci sequences. So the main rule for a Fibonacci sequence is you add the previous two terms to get the next one. So for example, 1 add 1. Makes 1 two. add 2 makes 3, 2 add 3, 5, and so on. So these are infinite sequences that will go on and on and on, and they will never reach an end. But you can imagine the numbers will get very, very big very, very quickly. So this is the most standard type of Fibonacci, where you start at 1 and 1 at the beginning. However, you can also get other sorts of Fibonacci sequences, which you can just make up on your own. If we have 4 and 5 at the start, the next number is going to be 9. 5 and 9 makes 14, 9 and 14 makes 23, and so on. You get the idea. So that is the main three sequences that you need to know about for your GCSE maths. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that helped.